to do a video warning about this group called A True Church. They uh, deny eternal security. They teach that if you kill yourself, you'll go to hell. And they'll say, well, we believe in eternal security, but, you know, so they don't believe in eternal security. My cat just jumped on my, my on my, kitty, kitty. My, my cat, his name is Boa, he just jumped on. So anyway, what they're saying here is that, and, and what you're going to see here is that they're non-dispensational. They're not, they don't, they'll take verses that are not even for us and they'll, they'll apply it to us. So what they're saying here is that my cat is rubbing against my computer. Kitty, no, 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 kitty, kitty, kitty funny cat. Basically what they're saying, kitty, get off my computer. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, what they're saying here is that basically you have to endure until the end and all this other stuff, and they're taking verses that are not, not even for us today. So I'll read it to you. Anderson's damnable heresy is made clear on the Sermon on Suicide, basic soul winning demonstration. He says, basically Anderson's saying if you commit suicide, you won't lose your salvation, and they're saying you will. But look what they say here. This is such a hellish lie, especially for those who take heed uh, heed to it in a time of despair. If they, I'm sick, my runny nose. If they did kill themselves, they would cert most certainly end up in torment forever. Revelation 21, verse 8. So apparently we're in the time of Jacob's trouble, apparently, according to these guys. It's Revelation written to us today. No, it's not. It's not even, not even written to us. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, where you can't take the mark of the beast. Okay? And then look what they say down here, typical of all conditional security people. Suicide is not enduring to the end. Matthew 24, verse 13. Wow, typical of all these guys. Is Matthew 24 written to us? No, it's not. Matthew 24, verse 16 talks about how let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Matthew 24, verse 20 talks about how, you know, pray ye, not your, pray, sorry, pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. That's a verse 20. So who is Jesus speaking to in that passage? Uh, we don't observe the Sabbath. Jesus was speaking to Jews in that passage. And again, even if Jesus was speaking to Christians, it's not, it's not even for us today. It's, it's dispensationally in the time of Jacob's trouble. And they talk about abide, abiding in Christ, John 15. And it, not even what it's talking about. Totally, twist, totally twisting it. And here's funny. They twist 1 Corinthians 15. It is not holding fast to the word. Okay, again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is laying out the gospel. It's not talking about you have to, to hold fast to be saved. Totally twisting it. I mean, they won't read the next couple. They won't show you the next couple of verses. And they go down there, and they talk about how, you know, if you if you uh, commit suicide, you'll go to hell. That's what they're trying to say here. And they say, you know, they say, uh, eternal, so they're saying it turns eternal security into something that it's not. They don't believe in eternal security. They're claiming we do, but if you can lose your salvation for any reason, you are not. you don't believe in eternal security. Okay, you're not sealed with the Holy Spirit, according to these guys. So, or I guess according to these guys, you be, you're sealed, but then you become unsealed or something like that. Ridiculous. So, they're lying when they say they believe in eternal security. They don't. But let me show you some verses on eternal security. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed, around the height of the whole thing, sealed unto the day of redemption. You're sealed. So, can a sealed, someone who's sealed, what does it mean to be sealed? You're kept. You're, 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 you know, packaged up. You're, you're sealed. How to, you know, I don't know how to word it properly, but you're sealed. So, what do you become unsealed or something? How does that work? Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. How does that work? If you, if you commit suicide and lose your salvation, so what does the Holy Spirit, you become unsealed? Ridiculous. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. So that you become, or so that, sorry, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, not waiting for the Antichrist, to all the post trippers out there, we're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 8. Who shall confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he'll confirm us unto the end. Very, very simple. But of course, conditional security, self-righteous heretics like those guys, they're not going to understand that. They're too prideful. Uh, first, first, or Second Timothy four eighteen, and the Lord shall deliver me, deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We're preserved. He preserves us. Second uh, Corinthians chapter one. I mean, there's so many verses I can go through. I'm just going through some of them right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he which established us with you in Christ 
hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So we're sealed. Again, we're sealed by God. He seals us. Uh, again, like uh, interesting, interesting, because again, they'll go to the Gospels, and the thing about the, the Gospel of John, is they quoted that in the article, is that the Gospel of John is transitioning from law to grace. So, and why I say that is because what what's written in the Gospel of John is, is very identical to what Paul says. And Paul is our apostle according to Romans chapter 11 verse 13 and Romans 15 verse 16. And in other verses too, but what John what is written in the Gospel of John is very is very identical and is almost like, almost the same as what Paul says. So that's why I believe that John is transitioning from law to grace, which these guys have have no idea. They're not, they're not dispensational. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. So they'll go back to verses like in the Old Testament because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are still under the Old Testament. My cat is trying to get out, and they'll take that and apply it to us today. But they won't even hand, they won't even go through the book of John. They quoted like one verse in the book of John, and not even what it's talking about too. But let me show you what the book of John says. Or, or I mean, the Gospel of John. Sorry. Uh, John chapter five, verse number twenty-four. Here's a verse they would not touch on. It makes a problem for their whole works righteous Catholics. It's it's Roman Catholicism what they're saying. I mean, if you can lose your salvation, you're preaching Roman Catholicism, because that's what the uh, Council of Trent it condemns eternal security. Uh, John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You will not come into condemnation. Uh, John chapter 6, verse... Where is it? Kitty. Uh, where is it? I'm trying to, trying to find the verses. Where is that verse? Here it is. Uh, I think it's... No, it's not there. Sorry, I, I, I'm trying to forget where the verse is. Here it is. John 6, 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all, or that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up at the last day. So he won't lose us. And when talking about what the Father giveth him, he's talking about like the believers, the people who who are who believe. He won't lose us. He won't, he'll lose nothing. It's that simple. Uh, oh yeah, another good verse to... Uh, Go make a problem for this whole thing is John or uh, John chapter six verse twenty seven. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, perisheth, sorry, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. And again, they'll say we have to endure. So he is talking about enduring. No, it's not. Now I'm talking about enduring. My cat, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So we're sealed again. Uh, John chapter, I think it's verse or John chapter ten. Sorry. Verses, I believe it's 20, 28 to 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And notice how he gives us, gives us eternal life. Not, not We don't give ourselves eternal life by enduring to the end or something. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, and, and the Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So again, it will never perish. John chapter, and you're going to see, you can kind of, see, you can really see why they didn't touch on the Gospel of John because it just debunks their whole system. John chapter 17 verses 11 to 12. Now I, now I, sorry, now and now I am no more in in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy One, keep through mine own name. The sorry, not good at reading. My own name, thou, those whom thou hast given me, that they be maybe one as we are, as we are. Sorry. Again, not not the best at reading on a computer. Uh, or is it? Verse 12. Look at verse 12. Here's a strong one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scriptures may be fulfilled. So we're kept. We won't be lost. And sorry if I sound kind of stuttery. This isn't like a planned video. I just did I just did this on the spot, so I'm not really prepared. Uh, just, I just did this video on the spot because I, I wanted to warn against this Roman Catholic, I mean, again, they're teaching Roman Catholicism, that's what it comes down to. Uh, I'm trying to think of some more scriptures to go to. Uh, I think it's all of them, actually, that I can think of on the spot. There's there's others, too, I, I could probably, oh yeah, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, here's a good one. There is there, of uh, Romans 8, 1, there is there now, or sorry, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And they'll say, see, you have to walk after the flesh. Uh, no, that's not what it's talking about. Jesus, look at verse 2. For the law of the Spirit is life, and Jesus Christ hath made us free from the law of sin and death. Jesus Christ. 
is uh, he made a he made us free. That's simple. It's that simple. Sorry. Again, this is not like a scripted prepared video. This is just me on the spot. So you can see how bad I am. Uh, that's all the scriptures I can think of. But there's others too. I mean, that's so many verses like you're sealed, you're preserved, you know, you're kept. You will not come into condemnation and you'll never perish. There's no condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. How do you get around that? You don't. You are eternally secure in this dispensation, not in the time of Jacob's trouble, because you can't take the mark of the beast. Whole other story. But don't believe these lying heretics right here. They're teaching all it is is all it is is just uh, Catholic uh, work salvation repackaged. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.